Hey guys, so uh, I wanted to do a brief tutorial on how to do a breakdown on a Simitsu Alutimo button. So I am working with a 30 millimeter button right here. Uh, and uh, I'm doing a slightly different format. So let me know what you guys think in terms of the format. Uh, but uh, let's get this guy rocking and rolling. So the first thing that you guys are gonna do is, uh, well, we don't need this guy, so we'll move that out of the way, is we want to identify where the little tabs are on the back. Should be relatively easy. All you have to do is squeeze the little tabs and kind of push in and you'll notice that the top of the button will already start to slide off. So from here, go ahead and pull that out. Now, so you'll have the cap. More than likely, if the inner cap is not loose, it'll still be intact, which is good because it's less stuff to worry about. So you're gonna set the cap off to the side. Now, from here, if the cap was loose, it'll uh, probably just fall out. But in this case scenario, this one's actually uh, been pushed down quite a bit. So it's nice and snug around the actual uh, key switch. So what we're gonna do in order to get this out, so you can do this in a couple different methods. You can take either a small Phillips head screwdriver and just jab it right in through the base of the, uh, the key switch right here where that little uh, nodule kind of sticks out and just push up. Um, just be careful not to stab yourself off the contacts here. Out of experience, one of the things that I would highly recommend is that when you do do this, keep the button somewhat upright because you have these. Uh, so you have these really little tiny roller pins that when you push up on this little button, if you do not have your switch upright, you are gonna lose these things. These are not glued or adhered in place by any means. And so with that being the case, make sure that when you do open your button for the first time, as you push up on that pad, keep that button relatively up or slightly angled up so you don't lose the roller pin. I've yet to use this thing. You guys can get this if you want to. I honestly don't feel like it's necessary. I'm sure it's helpful. I'm gonna try it out for the first time now as you guys are seeing the open said package. So it's the little button key pusher outer. So it's specifically designed to push on the little button from the, uh, from the bottom. So what we're gonna do is push that up and you can hear the little pop more. There it is, okay. Which was, it was helpful, but you can achieve pretty much the exact same thing when it comes to a screwdriver. As you lift the switch, so you can already see that even though I was very, very careful, my little roller pin that's down there has already, basically it's loose in there. I'm gonna need to put those back before I reassemble the switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump those out. When it comes to these guys here, there is no specific orientation that these need to go in, in terms of one side is flat or the other. It, it is a completely, cylindrical pin that falls into the the base of the unit you don't have to be really really explicit in um, how these guys go in as long as they go into the little crevices that are on the bottom of the base of the switch uh, you guys will be fine these things are tiny don't lose them we're going to examine the switch so all you're going to do is just pull these guys apart you don't have to be real ginger with it call this the top of the the little plunger do and then from here then you have your uh, your switch now the sumitsu alutemos it's just fun to say, has a little pre-installed one millimeter shim. This is preloading the actuation of the actual switch itself. So with that being the case, you're gonna get a much more sensitive button out of it. Uh, this also slightly pushes up onto the cap. So that way, when you're utilizing the button, your actuation point will be closer to the top of the button. If you do not like the slightly longer throw of the Simitsu Lutemos, all you have to do is take out that one millimeter shim. And uh, I'm actually gonna demonstrate that right now in terms of uh, how much shorter of a stroke that you'll get. But all you, all you need to do is just remove that guy. And again, tw tweezers work just fine. Don't lose it. It's tiny. Set that sucker off to the side. Now we have default switch is a cherry silver. I mean, it's not a horrible switch. I actually quite quite like them. It is a linear switch. For those of you that want something that has a little bit more tactility, or if you're me and you want a clicky switch, uh, I'm sure I'll do a tutorial on how to get a clicky switch in here. You guys can do those. Uh, to my understanding, the uh, cherry silvers are not pre-lubed. That's something that you guys can do You know, later on. I'll do a future video on that if you guys want to learn how to lube a key switch. Uh, it, just, it just gives it a slightly different feel and um, sometimes it eliminates scratchiness. Uh, you can also put films on these things as well to give uh, the switch a little bit more stability. 
I honestly don't feel like it'll be too horribly noticeable when it comes to fighting games. It's one of those things that if you're typing with these things, you're probably gonna feel it exponentially more. But if you are in the heat of a battle playing Tekken, Street Fighter 6, or whatever the case may be, you're really honestly probably not going to notice the scratchiness of a switch unless you're super sensitive to it. So that's something that uh, you guys can do uh, later on. So that's essentially how you disassemble a Samitsu Alutimo button. Now, to get the sucker back in, and uh, I'm not going to put the shim back, we're going to kind of zoom in on here. So right down and through here, we have the the little crevices on where the, uh, the, little, the little metal pins are going to go. And what they do is essentially bridge the contact of where the, the pin is to these little guys here. And that's essentially when you connect your buttons, um, how they're able to, to work. This is where switch compatibility is gonna vary when it comes to uh, putting in switches that are not cherry silver. One of the things that you're gonna be mindful of is gonna be the thickness of the pins. I know there are certain key switches out there that have a little bit thinner pins and that could prove to be a problem when it comes to the compatibility of the switch. So you guys are gonna to need to experiment with that in terms of uh, what's going on. Also, as of right now, the Sumitsu Alutimos do not, uh, basically these are three pin. So you have these little guys here, and then also this guy here, this is your third pin. They also have five pin switches, which uh, I will need to confirm with you guys later on, but I think all you really need to do is that if you really wanted to put a five pin switch within uh, a Sumitsu, uh, essentially all you need to do is um, shave off the other pins. And so that way you have the center pin and uh, the other two, uh, and then just shove the guy back in there. I will verify, don't yell at me if it doesn't work, but I would appreciate in the comments that if you guys do it before I do, you know, getting a little insight on that would work great. To my understanding as of right now, MX switches are going to be the uh, way to go with three pin. I also heard that it was also confirmed that certain box switches do currently work uh, in the uh, Sumitsu Anitimos buttons. We're going to get these roller pins right back into place. Ah, okay, finally, I got the pins back in. So those are the roller pins that go in there. So now what you're going to want to do is you want to be really, really careful. Don't shake this around too much. Make sure the orientation of the switch is proper when you throw this guy back in place. Make sure the pins are also not bent. Be very ginger when it comes to putting the switch back in first just to make sure that everything is good. Uh, make sure that the orientation of the pins are facing in the same direction as where the roller pins are. Roller pins facing up. We got the two other pins facing up. That's how I know the switch is gonna go back in that position. Set the switch first, so that way it's inside the box of the base of the switch. And then from there, slowly push it down. When you hear the snap, go ahead and uh, turn it over. Make sure that little black nodule is uh, pushing through the base of the switch. And then if you look close enough, you can see where the pin is uh, right next to the little metal roller here and then here and here. So that's how we know that this switch has been properly reassembled back into its proper place in the Sumitsu Elotemos. So now from all we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna push down on it just to get, give it a little bit of a, you know, just, just to make sure that it's properly in place. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am not gonna put the shim back. So I guys uh, show you what the short throw uh, button looks like. And then so from here, now this is gonna be important when you reassemble the button. Uh, I like to do it this way just to ensure, I like to do it this way so that way you guys can ensure the proper alignment of this cross piece into the top of the switch. Now, what it is that you're looking for is if you look into the switch itself at the moment, we have these two little hollow boxes here. You want to make sure you have clearance to these hollow boxes or else you're not gonna be able to put the top back on. So, because these little these little doodads here go directly into the hole. So what we're gonna do is you wanna orient this guy so that way these little wings on the white piece do not block the little square boxes. So we're gonna realign this guy here and then you should feel a little bit of a snap and then what we're gonna do is you're gonna push down onto that switch and then when you depress the little white topper onto that switch, you should feel it go down a little bit deeper. That's how you know that it's seated properly and also when you do one of these, it doesn't just fall out. So that's how you know that it's adhered to the uh, top of the uh, of the keyboard switch. Once we once we do that, we're gonna get our top. Then we align these little tabs into those little hollow boxes that are in there. You're just gonna kind of squeeze it past the little white switch, turn it just a little bit, and then from there, that is how you reassemble your Sumitsu Anatimo button. You guys can see that it is a little bit shorter. The feel of it is a little bit 
shorter as well. So you, you, it's uh, probably a little bit less or maybe on par with a Sanwa OBSF. Um, and but one of the things that uh, I have noticed that people in my Discord have also mentioned as well is that when you don't have that one millimeter shim, the button rattles a little bit. So if that is a problem for you, I can't see that being a problem unless you're wearing gravity boots and you're playing uh, your Street Fighter game upside down. But if you have the Simitsu Anathemos as a side button uh, or an auxiliary button on the side of the case and the button is oriented onto the side, sometimes maybe a little bit of that gyration might wiggle the button around and that might become annoying to you. So something just to kind of keep in mind, but I can't really foresee that necessarily being a problem. But it is something to keep in mind that the, the top of the, uh, the plunger of the button is set loose up towards the top if you are doing the short throw mod. If you are playing with it flat, it really is not gonna be that big of a deal. You're not gonna be able to notice um, the button rattle even at during gameplay, it is not that big of a deal. Uh, one of the advantages of having um, the short throw of it is it makes sliding inputs a little bit easier to do. Um, right now it's a little difficult to do because I still haven't taken the plastic film off of the button because I'm weird like that. Um, but in terms of normal play, it does make uh, sliding inputs a little bit easier as I keep snagging the freaking sticker. So anyway, uh, I hope this guide is helpful for you guys. Uh, hit me up into the, uh, the comments of the video. I would love your feedback. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more things like it, please leave a like and a subscribe would be absolutely fantastic. I will see you guys next time. Oh, hey, would you look at that? That cookie bastard's been busy. Oh my God. <laughs> Pixel, stay out of the Carolina Reapers. Hey, do me a favor. Slap me a Fonz. Hit that subscribe button and ding-a-ding-dong that bell for all the crazy sh** we do here.